Hi folks, uh, Mr. Bullock here and uh, this is Board Problem 19. This is a stat lesson on transformation, so the beginning of a new chapter. So which of the following is likely to have a mean that is smaller than the median? So the salaries of all NFL players, is the mean smaller than the median? No way. Uh, because there, there's too much money. They make too much money and the median would be probably smaller. The scores of students on a very easy exam uh, so if the score, if it's an easy exam, then their scores would be really high. So their mean would be really high. So probably not that. The prices of homes in a large city, no, because um, they would be really high. The score, um, we're doing this in class, in case you're wondering, and they're taking a group test, so they're they're sitting here taking a group test. The scores of students on a very difficult exam, in which uh, most students uh, uh, get poor scores, but a few do very well. That's it right there, okay? Because the average would be lower, all right? So the answer is D. All right, uh, and then so here's transforming relationships. This is a cool lesson. Uh, uh, here's the graph of 96 species of mammals comparing the weights of their body weight with uh, their brain weight. And so this is a uh, figure 4-1 on page 195, and it's least square regression line. Okay, so there it is. All right, so looks like down here we got the body weights down here in kilograms. Right here is their weights of their brains, and here's all. The, and these are all mammals. Okay, these are all mammals, and there's some there's some outliers. There's humans. There's dolphins. There's hippos. Elephants. So I'll disregard that noise in the background. All right, so here's some characteristics, you guys. So characteristics, there's some interesting outliers happening. Okay, the dolphins and humans seem to have a much larger brains than their body weights uh, suggest. Uh, the hippos have a much smaller brain than their body weights suggest. They're the dummies. Uh, the elephants are just big all over. They're big weight, big brain weight too. Uh, 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 but these uh, outside these four outliers, the other mammals form a big old blob over here, okay, in the lower left-hand corner. All right, so uh, when you include these outliers, the correlation of the brain weight and the body weight when you do a least square regression line is 0.86, pretty darn strong. Uh, but it's misleading. Just by removing the elephant uh, and using the other 95 species, the correlation drops to 0.5. Can you see if I took out that elephant, it would dip that line down quite a bit. That elephant's pulling that line up a lot right there. All right, so figure 4-2 on uh, page 196 has all four outliers removed with the scale adjusted appropriately. Okay, so here it is right there. Now look at that. What would you say if you saw that scatter plot right there? I would say it's not very strong, wouldn't you? Um, it would not be a very good linear relationship right there. So this relationship is not linear, and R is getting closer to zero. All right, biologists discovered that by transforming, uh, by taking the transformation uh, of logarithms on the data of size, your graphs take a magical magical transformation and I'll show you how to do that when you get into class in the next lesson on your calculators it is something else so this next figure is on page 196 um, it takes the log of the brain weights and the log of the body weights remember logarithms from your algebra 2 class and then it so you take so say you have um, uh, the body weight in list 1 and you have the brain weight in list 2 what you're going to do for list 3 is you're going to log list 1 so up here, up here where it says list three, you'd take and you'd log list one, and all of a sudden you'd have all the logarithm numbers of all list one. And then list four, you'd take all the logarithms of list two, and then you'd graph list three and list four, and it would look like that. Isn't that magical? Look how close those guys get. They make close to a line. So that is cool, man. So here we go. Um, so this is section C. So there's no strong outliers when you log everything, or there's no influential data. That is good stuff, and, and the pattern is almost linear. The correlation becomes 0.96. Magical. So the residuals, uh, the vertical spread, is very similar to uh, uh, everywhere. Can't you see these are all uh, really close to the least square regression line right here? So if I did a residual plot on that, um, it would be uh, very, very uniform going across. And so uh, then you can get the prediction of your brain weight from the body weight, uh, very precisely that way. So facts about transformations, you guys. 
you, uh, linear transformations cannot straighten out curves or scatter plots between two variables. Uh, to do that, what you do is you, you uh, transform the data uh, and take things like logarithms. A log transformation is going to be our key trick on this. So we're going to log things. So, um, and then just some definitions, you guys. Monotonic functions, monotonic functions, sorry. A monotonic function moves in one direction so it either it goes either goes up or goes down as x increases okay if it goes up and down it's not monotonic so a monotonic increasing func function increases as x increases so it's going up basically so um, uh, so it's a, and your book will say as a gets bigger than b which just means as x increases then f of a is bigger than f of b which just means as y increases okay it just means it increases so as x increases so does y or so does f of x okay a monotonic uh, decreasing function is uh, is uh, uh, it, it decreases when y decreases as x increases. So the book says uh, as a is bigger than b, which just means as x increases, then f of a is less than f of b, which just means y is decreasing. So it's, it's decreasing down like that. That would be a monotonic decreasing function. Some monotonic functions uh, can be monotonic over a range without being monotonic everywhere. For example, uh, the function f of x equals x squared. Remember a parabola? looks like this y equals x squared so it would be monotonically decreasing all the way to zero and then when you get to zero then it starts doing a monotonic increasing right there okay so uh, let's see what else do I have for you here uh, let's see if the range includes both increasing and decreasing then it's not monotonic but it is over certain intervals so it won't be monotonic at all all right if you're my kids this year in 2013 otherwise uh, uh, that would be we're gonna postpone that and you're gonna do that in class but if, if it's not I don't know what the status is so right now that's it take care everybody